Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. My name is Marcela Bonell. I'm a software engineer at Intel, but I'm from, from Mexico. And I'm also an uh, OpenStack contributor and a member of the App Ecosystem Working Group. So as I hope you enjoy my presentation. So app developers are very important for OpenStack Grow because they are the ones who create applications that run on, on the top of OpenStack. App developers are the people who create the ecosystem, and they are the drivers of any technology adoption. That's why OpenStack had to embrace application developers and provide the resources that they need to create their Cloudware apps, taking the adoption of OpenStack to the next level. In this session, you will understand the current state of OpenStack about uh, application developer experience and what is needed to do to provide the proper resources that application developers need to succeed in OpenStack. So where is OpenStack in terms of developer experience? This is a tough question, and it's not easy to answer. But in order to drive efforts in the App Ecosystem Working Group to make OpenStack more efficient for application developers, we decide to analyze the most, po uh, the most popular public clouds, like Amazon Web Service, uh, Google Cloud Platform, and Microsoft Azure, and compare them against OpenStack. The latest uh, OpenStack user survey in the application development section tries to know how app developers are using and interacting with OpenStack. Uh, the section has four questions about what SDKs do you use for interact with the OpenStack APIs, uh, what are the uh, improvements that you want to see in OpenStack about application developer, and what other clouds do you use, and the stacks for build your apps. And this is a great question, but just forget a general insight. The community needs to go deeper for know more details about how app developers are using OpenStack. For example, how are they monitoring the application, or how are they packaging and deploying the apps? Uh, do they have a failure notification system? Uh, what are the major fa uh, errors or issues that they face during development applications that run on OpenStack? These are the available resources uh, about development in the OpenStack developer portal. Basically, the OpenStack uh, API reference, SDKs, and the OpenStack uh, first app guide, better known as my first app. There are 37 uh, available SDKs for languages like Python, Java, C Sharp, and so on. But none of them are official. I mean, they are not OpenStack projects. And my first app is the only sample app available, and it's only published for one SDK, uh, LibCloud. So if we want to make OpenStack more efficient for application developers, first we need to take a look at, the, at this current developer experience. That's why at Intel, we decide to support the creation of a cloud comparison to analyze um, the developer experience across uh, these providers and compare them against OpenStack. Our goal was to discover the best practices and gaps in OpenStack uh, against the others. We choose uh, Rackspace and OVH as OpenStack providers against the most popular. And this is the process that we follow to create our cloud analysis. First, we select the cloud providers. Then, we, crea uh, we create accounts for these providers. And basically, we use uh, free trials because it's the first way that developers do things, free. Then, we prepare a questionnaire uh, with, uh, basically, this is a spreadsheet with questions focus on assess the developer experience on each one of the development stages during the development life cycle. Then we select the apps to deploy. And we choose the apps in the Garden Study tutorials on each provider. And for OpenStack, we use my first app uh, with LeadCloud and Shade SDK. 
because it's the only available. Then we recruit developers. And these are the application developers that have to live the whole experience uh, doing the development on each cloud provider. And my Intel folks, Ivan Escareno and Angel Perez, help me out with this. Next, we observe and document the whole developer journey. So the developers and observers have to work together on shadowing session. I was playing the role of observer, so I was uh, making the questions, taking a screenshots, and documenting everything while Ivan and Angel was testing all the clouds. And finally, we present the results and we share as a report in the App Ecosystem Working Group. And this uh, is the developer journey that represents basically all the stages that developers follow during this cloud analysis, since the creation of the accounts until the destroying or deleting all the resources. So now I will start presenting the findings that we discovered during this, this cloud analysis. They are, will be divided by each one of the developer journey section, and, you will, uh, and they will be classified in red for critical issues, yellow for gaps, and green for uh, best practices. So, in sign up. Um, and at this stage, the developers create the, and activate the accounts. So for Rackspace and Novich, th this was very easy because they only require uh, an email and a password to create and activate the account. For Amazon, so no, for uh, Azure and uh, Google Cloud, you need a proprietary account. I mean, a Outlook or a Microsoft account or a Google account. So it's an, an additional step. And uh, on, on AWS was the tricky one because the activation is through a phone call. So the developers never receive the phone call because the process about how to write your, uh, uh, your phone number is not very clear. So at the end, the developers create a support ticket to activate uh, the account on Amazon. Next, welcome pack. We call welcome pack to the emails that uh, the provider send you when you create your account. And these emails basically contain uh, useful information for developers, like links to the developer center, videos, and tutorials. So OVH doesn't send you a welcome pack. And indeed, it doesn't have a developer portal. Um, Azure sends you a welcome pack, but it's so overwhelming that the developers didn't find a way go, uh, to go through the amount of information. And the other providers send very useful welcome pack. Billing. Being aware of the uh, money or the, the resources that they, they are uh, spending is very important for developers. They want to know how the resources are spending the money and forecast future charge. So here are the, uh, some images of some uh, dashboard about billing in different clouds. Um, our developer says that AWS has the better uh, user experience in the dashboard billing because it has um, uh, detailed reports, summaries per service, graphics, and everything is very visual and easy to understand. OVH so, show little information, but it's very clear and easy to understand. Rackspace also shows little information, but the developer says that they would like to see like, more details because they are not sure how the money was spent. And Google Cloud, well, is not a dashboard because it's not very visual. It's just a list of the, all the charts. Infrastructure. At uh, this stage, the developers create all the resources that are needed by their apps, like application servers, databases, storage services, networking setup, and security. This was the, the hardest step for developers on OpenStack. We have red bullets here, so let's see what happened. The first one. And on OVH and Rec Space, uh, the instances, security groups, 
um, floating IPs cannot be created using Leak Cloud SDK. Because Leak Cloud uses the Compute API, Nova Network, for networking setup. And, this, and those uh, providers use Neutron. So Leak Cloud uh, has not implemented the Neutron API. That's why the developers were getting 404 errors, something like the resource cannot be found because the, AP, the SDK can communicate with the API. So if, you're, if you have an OpenStack cloud that uses uh, Neutron and your application will interact with it, as a Leap Cloud is not an option for, your, for the SDK of your app. So then the developers moved to Shade SDK. And it works fine on OVH because Shade supports both APIs, Nova Network and, and Neutron. So all the resources that my first app required were created successful in, with Shade in OVH. But in other hands, for Rackspace, the developers tried the same, but it doesn't work. Because despite of the fact that Rackspace used Neutron, uh, the API is not exposed to developers. So Shade cannot communicate with the API. And so the, my first app can run on Rackspace using Leak Cloud or Shade. Also, um, the developers um, didn't find how to create uh, floating IPs because they are not available yet and the uh, security groups are not, and, uh, are not um, able by default in the dashboards. For the other clouds, um, infrastructure was not a big deal. Basically because, uh, for example, Google Cloud and Azure provides um, platform as a service. So developers don't care too much about infrastructure, just deploy their code. And on Amazon, you have to create the infrastructure. But it was very easy because the developers say that uh, all the uh, tools and services are very easy to follow. And if not, they have uh, too much documentation. Development. Here, the developers uh, follow all the um, tutorials choosing an available language on the cloud. So the good news is that the developers didn't have to learn a new programming language. All the uh, language that developers like are available on the clouds. The preferred ones was um, Java, Python, PHP, and C Sharp. Um, for, for my first app, um, well, uh, it's not available. Uh, it's just available for one SDK that is Leap Cloud. So the developers said that um, AWS has the most complete developer portal because it's very well organized, has many tutorials for different languages, and some videos. Deployments. AWS and Google Cloud provide their own uh, deployment tools. It's basically a CLI, and the developers can deploy their app without seeing some comments. Um, and for, uh, for OpenStack, my first app used Cloud Init. And Cloud Init is a tool that uh, allows you to run some bash commands after the creation of a virtual machine, for example. So if you want to deploy your application or automate the deploy, deploy of your application on OpenStack, you have to create your own scripts. There is no tool. Uh, or available very easy for developers, for entry developers, for onboarding developers. Updates and redeployment. In case that you need to uh, update your app, something that happens every day, um, um, AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure, it uh, automatically will do it with a, just with a single push code, pushing your code right to the cloud. So uh, in OpenStack, you can do the same, but only if you prepare your scripts and has uh, some projects available in your cloud. For example, Heat, Murano, or Solve. 
and then last uh, stages, monitoring and cleanup. So the rack space and Amazon Web Service, as far as also Google Cloud, provides a monitor to see all the resources that you are uh, running in your cloud. And developers love these tools because they want to be aware how the resources are, uh, are in the cloud. So also, they use these monitor clouds to take decisions about when grow their application in case, in case that the app doesn't do it by itself. OVH also have a monitor uh, tool, but it's very basic because only show uh, RAM, CPU, and traffic by instance. About cleanup, well, in this case, uh, all the uh, providers have uh, good methods to, to delete the application, the resources of the application without any problem. So we are um, in the same uh, for every uh, provider. So now, uh, I'm going to present maybe the most important slide of my presentation. And this uh, graphic is the visual representation of the developer experience lived by our, our developers during this cloud analysis. And how we come up with this? Um, the developers grade the, their developer experience on each cloud provider by each one of the stages during the developer journey. So they grade from one, the lowest uh, grade, to five, the highest grade. So this is the graphic that represents the developer experience in these providers by the way that we did this analysis. As you can see, there are different colors by each provider, and the areas covered represent um, the findings that we discover in this analysis. This is a clear representation to see what is happening. So, as you can see, AWS has covered more areas. Uh, the developers say that uh, AWS has better developer experience for them, and followed by Google Cloud and Microsoft Azure. So. Right now, in OpenStack, there is a, a lot of work to do about improvement of developer experience. And that's uh, part of my mission, <laughs> to contribute uh, to the community to make uh, better for OpenStack for developers. So on, another result that we get with this is that the two major gaps about the, the, the developer experience in OpenStack is first, uh, the SDKs. Um, some developers like use SDKs, so they said that the OpenStack SDKs are outdated or incomplete, so they can uh, do uh, many things with them. For example, the APIs are moving, are moving every release and improve it and improve it, but the SDKs don't done, so they only are, are they are very slow because maybe because they are not uh, OpenStack projects, so. And the other uh, important gap was the tremendous lack of development documentation and resources for developers. In developer.openstack.org, um, we only have one uh, sample app for one SDK. So we need more resources there. So what are some of or recommendations to make OpenStack better for application developers. Yeah, we must to low the barriers that app developers are facing, and there is a huge improvement area that plans to be fixed and augmented. So what can I do, what can we do as a community to help app developers? I have three items here. First, uh, to provide a better uh, developer portal. We know that we have some SDKs, uh, sample apps, but it's not enough. Developers need more. Need more real sample apps, need more uh, workload reference, they need usable SDKs, they need more tools. They need to be uh, trained, they need to be uh, ready. They, need, they want to create, create cloud whereas, but they don't have, they don't know how. <laughs> so also, uh, my second point is to 
uh, improve the, the SDKs that we have. We have 37, so we can do something about it. Um, the, the last one is to promote hackathons, offer training, focus on app developers. Because we need to change the development mindset that right now is like the traditional model because it's the way that we learn. But from here to, uh, to the future, uh, developers have to talk, have to think only on Cloudware apps and well, I don't know what other thing will appear. So, for example, in yesterday in the keynote, we, we saw the, about the, the Taiwan Hackathon, and it was amazing. Yeah, uh, everything that developers can do when they receive coaching, mentoring, and resources to create an, um, ideas in, and create products. So, also, I'm very proud that the next hackathon will be on Mexico. So I'm part of the organization, and if you want to help us with mentorship or sponsor, yes, please contact me. So we need to do, we need to uh, have uh, these things um, priorities as priorities, and start working on more items. Also, so I'm looking for help from you, from the, all the OpenStack community to improve developer experience in OpenStack. That's why I have three call to action and invitation for you all. First, the SDKs improvement. There are 37 SDKs, um, but they are incompleted, outdated. So how our developers can create applications if they don't have, uh, for example, SDKs? So the first chart represents the distribution of the 37 uh, SDKs by programming language. And the second chart is the state of, uh, of the status of, these, uh, of those SDKs. As you can see in the colors, the 59% of the SDKs available are incompleted with issues or depth. So it's not good news. <laughs> And the next call to action is the first app completion. In the App Ecosystem Working Group, we, we want to drive this effort, the effort with the SDKs, with the efforts with my first app. And this table represents the, the sections that compose my first app by some of the SDKs that have tried to create uh, the tutorial, at least for one SDK. Red, uh, sorry. Um, Green is for publish, that is click cloud, remember, the only one. Uh, or uh, yellow for ready to test, orange for in progress, and red for, uh, and red for not done. Where is the predominant color? Red, not done. So we need your help. We need app developers that want to help app developers to succeed in OpenStack, in the Cloudware world. So, my, my third uh, call to action is to uh, do your own cloud comparison. Today you learn the process that I follow, and I, in the link there is the, um, all the documentation that I have for run this kind of uh, comparison. So do your own cloud comparison. If you are an cloud, OpenStack cloud provider, or if you are an um, interest in test the developer experience in your cloud, use the material. And most important, share the findings with the App Ecosystem Working Group. We, we want to know what is happening. And also there is a link to, to the email for the uh, App Ecosystem Working Group. So finally, this is an invitation. Today is the working session uh, about the Open uh, the app developer, the app ecosystem working group. So we need your help. You can join us to uh, give us feedback or volunteer to say, for example, I, oh, you know, I'm a Go developer and I want to help with the Go SDKs for OpenStack, or I'm I'm a Node.js developer, or an, well, I mean JavaScript developer, and I want to complete the developer, uh, the, my first app for, for uh, JavaScript, or I don't know. But you, 
I would like to see some of you there because we are going to uh, define our goals and priorities and we, uh, we, want, we need help, right? So, questions? No, why, by now we only have the material for tests, uh, your, the cloud or your experience, but that kind of uh, material is the one that we need, right? Like direction for developers or how we as our open stack contributors, we can help with our contributions to the app developers because there are different uh, kind of developers. Right so it's different, yeah. Developer, these kind of developers make, uh, they want to like the things more easy. <laughs> So I, I may have missed it, um, what type of application it was. And part of the reason I ask is that public cloud providers are providing platform level services, not just infrastructure level. So they're providing things like latency based routing. And you know I know OpenStack has a load balancer and that sort of thing. But there's also ElastiCache and RDB support, all, all these kind of app layer services. And they're highly reliable and very good. And, and OpenStack seems to be lacking in some way. So I'm wondering if your app touched upon those sorts of things and if the people who were familiar with the public cloud could leverage those things and give you good feedback on where the gaps might be. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, I mean the first app, the only one that we have, it, it pretends to be uh, like a high application. Be but at the end it used API, so it's connected to the infrastructure. So uh, this is a good point, right? Thanks. Something else? No? Well, thank you, everybody. <laughs>